Next problem is calculating equilibrium concentrations one. Take a moment to read the problem. Okay, in this case, we can write an equation. We're given the KEQ value, the equilibrium constant, and we are asked to calculate the equilibrium concentrations of all the species given one mole of each component initially in a one liter flask. So this time they're not giving us any of the equilibrium concentrations. We have to do something called dirty rice, and you'll see why in just a minute. It's very silly. All right, so we have carbon monoxide reacts with steam to produce carbon dioxide and hydrogen. So first we need a balanced equation. And that works for me. I'm going to put my rice here on the side. My initial concentrations, it says Calculate equilibrium concentrations of all, species, of all species if one mole of each component is mixed in a one liter flask. So that means I have 1.0 molar CO, 1.0 molar H2O, 1.0 molar CO2, and 1.0 molar H2. Before I can even begin this question, I have to decide which direction this equation is even going. I can't just assume that it's going to go toward the products. I have to use Q to compare my other values. Again, Q looks like the, the uh, equilibrium setup, except it doesn't necessarily match. So for this one's equilibrium setup, it's just going to be concentration CO2, H2O over CO and H2O. Since they're all one, That gives me a Q value of 1, whereas K is 5.10, so Q is less than K. Since Q is less than K, that means we're going to be shifting toward the product side as we proceed through our reaction. Okay. Now what we can do is, since we don't know any of the equilibrium concentrations, but we know that this reaction is going to be forming more products, we can use X's and the stoichiometry to relate all the components. So if we are going to be forming CO2 and water, we're going to be increasing by X, that's a one-to-one -one ratio, and to form those we have to use up X amount of CO and H2O. Decreasing reactants, increasing products. So our equilibrium concentrations then become 1 minus X, 1 minus X, 1 plus X, and 1 plus X. Now we have to take those values and plug them into the expression in order to find out what X is and then solve for the concentrations. So my K expression is again CO2 times H2 over CO times H2O. So when I plug all of this in, the CO2 and the H2O are both 1 plus X. So that's basically 1 plus X squared over 1 minus x times 1 minus x, so that's 1 minus x squared, and that's equal to the equilibrium constant, which is 5.1. We don't like when we see these things, okay? This one's not too bad. We have two things that are squared, so the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to take the square root of everything, which will leave me with 1 plus x, over 1 minus x equals the square root of 5.1, which is 2.258. Now I have to cross multiply and solve for x and do all of that wonderful good stuff. Okay, so I have 2.258 minus 
2.258x equals 2.258 plus 2.258x. Oh wait, I'm silly. Go back. Cross multiply this part, 2.258 minus 2.258x equals 1 plus x, my bad. Now I need to solve for x. So 2.258 minus 1 will give me 1.258 equals x minus negative 2.258 equals 3.258x. and then divide and I get 0 0.386 equals x. At this point what I have to do now is I have to take that x and I have to go back to my equilibrium concentrations and I have to determine them. So 1 minus 0.386 1 minus 0.386 1 plus 0.386 and 1 plus 0.386. So my concentrations end up being for both the CO and the H2O because they're 1 minus 0.386, 0 0.614 molar and for the products CO2 and H2, 1 plus 0.386, so add them up. It's a big problem and they can get very tricky.